Hey guys, welcome back. Blue Yeti sent me out this AC180 to test out for this camper. If you are new to the channel, I built this camper over the past two years, two and a half years. And this thing is here to power the camper. But first, I will try to plug different things into it and see how it runs. Because there are so many videos of reviewing this power station where they just talk about the stats. This has 1152 watt hours, so a tool that needs 1152 watts, it can run for an hour. It has built in batteries, an inverter to power 220 tools in my case, in the US it's 110, and it has four outlets. It has also USB C, USB A, and a cigarette lighter socket and the input for the solar panel. Currently I'm charging my phone with the wireless charger on top. These are the stats on screen, somewhere here. Just to show it off, it comes with a charging cord, of course. A cord for connecting up any solar panels, or if you have one, you can plug them into here. But I also, got this 200 watt solar panel which is foldable to use i will test it out separately and it comes with a car charger you can also charge it in your car when you're driving and use it simultaneously so let's check out my projects that i'm working on and test this power station from blue Yeti out but first, since we are here in the camper, I would like to try out a few appliances that we are going to use while we are camping. For example, this small water kettle. So let's plug this in and see if it works. It has some water in it and it says it is 900 to 1100 watts. So let's turn on the AC inverter. The fan kicked on and it draws about 1000 watts. And I can use it for almost an hour, but it only should take a couple of minutes to boil this water. I'm also going to try this hair dryer for my wife if it can run simultaneously so uh, this is running and that is running as well and we are drawing almost 2000 watts and this is already boiling good to go only took one minute or so so you can use it for a weekend I guess not even warm. The last big power draw that we are going to have in this camper is occasionally a small heater. We also have a gas furnace installed but I don't like to use gas if possible but it's in emergency it's very welcome so this says it has 1500 watts so this should be no problem and this could run on max settings for almost an hour on the lowest settings it draws about 500 watts so that should be about almost two hours obviously all the lights in this camper are leds and 12 volts so that's not a problem not a huge draw so that should be good as well the weight is also manageable with 16 kilograms or about 1565 bananas. Uh, this should be also good to run a fridge in case of a blackout. So let's try this. I have our fridge plugged and let's plug it in and turn the AC inverter on. So it just turned on. It draws about 30 watts and it will run for 21 hours. 
but we are down on power to 86% already because of the previous tests. This is a Samsung fridge from 2017 I guess. It's a fridge freezer combo, uh, typical European size. Obviously when it comes to shop stuff it can be used as well, maybe on a job site with a table saw or heat gun for example, this one. But in a home shop it could be used for 3D printing because some of my prints take over 20 hours and would be a bummer if the power goes down and the print would fail. So I can use this as a UPS. So if the grid goes down, this detects it and switches it over or for example for your computer or even if you're gaming and you have a big boss fight or something like that but maybe you are going to use it for, I don't know, vacuuming your yard or some other yard work. I want to try out this heat gun because it draws 2000 watts and this is rated for 1800 watts. So if this goes I will be very happy. So let's turn it on on max. The fan inside the inverter just kicked in. So as you have seen, it draws around 1850 watts. The machine is stated at 1800, so it's more than capable of delivering that. I have to fix some panels for the camper by using the table saw and the biscuit joiner. So plug them in and test them out. And for those of you who like a little bit of music and the montage, here you go. I hope you like this little montage. For those of you who are wondering where is the last episode of the camper build, this is my truck where the camper will sit on and I have to fix some rust and some rot and here a little patch and some other things before the camper can go on. The other truck don't has a title yet so I have to fix this to get the camper this year on the road. I'm not sure if the Bluetti AC180 can handle the load of a welder, but it would be very handy to have a machine that I can roll around and not have to drag an extension lead everywhere. So let's give it a try. The only cord I'm plugging in is the one from the welder, like here. Let's just plug this in to here. Turn on the AC. Now you're recording. Let's sync up the two cameras. The welder turned on. That's good. Okay, it welded something. But as you maybe can see, let me bring it a little bit closer. The welder just turned off but I got a little tech weld on there. So I restarted the power station and the welder. Let me get some gloves on just for the safety nerds out there. And just put something heavy on it. I left this 
old MIG wire on it, which I had to cut because it's fused. And let me turn the welder a little bit down to, I guess, 100 amp maybe. That will work. I turn the power from the welder a little bit up and less wire and it just looks like this. I made some wingle ding dings and it's still hot. Okay, but I'm very very surprised and super happy with this thing. So let me get going with that one and we continue with the video. Now that the sun is out and we are down to 56% let's try the solar panel that Blue Yeti sent me out the PV200 let's set it up and test it it comes like this with a nice carrying handle and some push to open snaps and in this bag which is attached there are all the connections and these are the feet you can open up and adjust to get the right angle to the sun so let's open it up and plug it in I really like this solution you can adjust the angle of the solar panel by choosing between these snaps like that or just like so there's three variations but you can always find something to lean this solar pan panel against this cable that comes with a power station is to attach the solar panel just red to red, black to black and the DC plug on the end goes into here and it automatically turns on let me move this out of the sun so we can see the cord is about this long that's about 3 meters with the adapter lead and now you can see we are charging with 158 watts and it will take us 3.5 hours with that rate to charge this fully up. Let me get over to the solar panel and I will try to adjust the angle or do something. Maybe we can get it higher than that. It's the end of October right now so it's pretty tricky to do but if I hold it like this so that should be fully facing the sun that's the best I can do right now but it will be charged up in 3.4 hours and you can also use it simultaneously I don't know if it's normal but maybe you can see on the other camera if I hold my hand above the solar panel the input drops down even if I just do it like this with one hand doesn't matter which panel I do it on so I guess I must be careful not to put it in a partial shade or nothing is blocking even one panel and if you are curious the height is about 60 and the total length is about 225 so it will not fit in your car window maybe if you just fold it into three pieces but I guess then it's down one panel let me check this if I do this I don't see but I can check with the app which is very handy in cases like this <coughs> there is also an offline mode which I like you don't need to register it so we are 
putting in 100 watts right now 116 so you can use it like this in your car window let me look at some some things here here are echo mode it can turn off when not in use or it draws less power than you set it user manual charging mode is I guess for for when you're plugged in into shore power you can see the voltage amperage how much you're pulling from the battery battery pack serial number stood to the it's charging right now that's a, it's a nice simple app I like it very much you can turn off the DC output turn on the AC output it's super easy to use and you don't need to register an account there are many more use cases where this power station could come handy leave them down in the comments below if you have any suggestions the solar panel is also great to use when you are on the run or when you are traveling and need a quick charge other than that I, I, I'm really surprised that it delivered what it stated also the build quality is very good I also like that this that these handles are on the side so sunken in and not on the top as on many others so it's easy to strap down to something if you are traveling in a camper like this the phone charger is okay I don't plan to use it that much USBs are handy so if you are interested in these products check the description I leave there some links for you to check out thanks to Blue Yeti to sending me these two things out to test I'm sure there will be plenty of cases I will use them. So thank you guys for watching and see you next time.